I'm going to give a very short talk in about 10 minutes on um, some fittings that are used in nuclear applications, uh, mostly at Lawrence Livermore Laboratories at this point. But it's also used in some spacecraft, that rover going to Mars. So these fittings are actually on that rover. There's 60 of them on that rover, part of the heat rejection system. So um, it does apply to what we're do talking about here. So the NIF laser is a big reactor. It's, it's at um, Livermore Laboratories. They're doing fusion research. They're very close to um, ignition at this point. And uh, OmniSafe fittings are on that um, because we come down to um, a couple of different design modalities. One is all welded systems and one is modular systems where we can take things apart and put them back together, take out components and service it. In order to have a good uh, modular system, we need to have a very reliable, uh, high integrity fitting that can be made and demated several times. And so that's where this fitting comes into the picture here. The uh, standard uh, VCR, not to be confused with the recording equipment, uh, VCR stands for Vacuum Compression Radius. Uh, fitting, which was developed at Livermore Laboratories and used in nuclear applications, was the one on the top there. It's got two glands, they're called, they crush into a gasket. There's a male and female nut. And as you tighten that fitting down, <clears throat> um, I was talking to Kirk uh, Dorius yesterday, he was talking about his working on his car. You have to pre-rotate the components out of alignment so when you tighten them, they'll be in alignment because they both rotate in equal and opposite directions as you're tightening with a wrench. So it's been a problem in the industry. Um, because these things are also used in the semiconductor industry, the issue of particles comes up. And uh, if you had a piece of sandpaper between two hands and pushed as hard as you could, you wouldn't do much damage. But if you had that sandpaper and pushed as hard as you could and then twisted one like this, you'd tear all the skin off one side. And that's actually what's happening. On those two face faces, those two ceiling faces, as that pushes and rotates, you're particulating into the process stream and you're ruining your yield downline in semiconductor equipment. It also degrades that ceiling surface so that this fitting cannot be mate and demated um, indefinitely. After about 15 times, that upper fitting will no longer pass uh, 10 to minus 9 leak check. And it also, uh, because there's a twist in it as it's tightened under shock and vibration, that fitting loosens. So all these different li liabilities with that top fitting have actually been solved now by this little widget here, which is uh, called a torque eliminator. There's one here and there's one here. They're identical and they uh, mate to each other as the fitting is tightened. They prevent anything except for pure compression. And this fitting um, was installed in the crystal growth equipment at Livermore Laboratories, and they were flowing HF through it. That fitting was mate and demated 1,500 times, and it still passed leak check. So at the end of the process, I said, can I have that fitting? I really would like to see what it looks like after 1,500 mate and demate. And they go, well, it's HF. And, it's decon you've got to send it to decontamination, so I never got to see it, unfortunately, but it was still functioning after 1,550 mates and demates. The main thing is there's no stored residual torque, there's no particles, there's no galling of sealing surfaces. There's, um, because we're also very concerned about corrosion with these molten salt reactors, we want to use materials like Hastelloy N, and we want to make sure that, uh, we talked about passivation earlier today, we want to make sure that that sealing surface is not being degraded and not being torn off. So um, this uh, helps in that application. Um, glands and gaskets are compatible. You know, just basically it's a very universal fitting. It can be uh, from 16th inch, which is in spacecraft, up to about one inch diameter for this particular type of design. This just shows some of the problems with galling. And so you'll see, you know, with compression fittings where the rotation is present, you'll end up with galling. Under magnification, you can see, yeah, here's where the particles come from. On the top drawing is without torque elimination and the bottom is with torque elimination. And just some more drawings of that, the gaskets and the ceiling faces. Here's the fitting. So uh, one of the problems with the standard fitting is you, if you forget the gasket, the gasket drops out for some reason, and you tighten the fitting without a gasket, the two faces uh, basically crush and destroy each other. In this fitting, it fails safe. The two torque limiters actually bottom out. They'll prevent bead-to-bead -bead contact and destruction. So if you forgot the gasket, uh, the fitting fails gracefully, you don't pass leak check, you just put the, ga put the gasket back in, everything's fine. Um, this is a vibration shock test. Uh, these fittings, if they're going to be used in a modular system like Kirk's talking about, maybe for the military, you want to be able to move it around, drop it somewhere, you don't want the fittings loosening up. And so um, this is mill standard 810E, it's a transportation vibration spec, and um, they are moving, these fittings are, are changing position with the shock and vibration shock to the bottom of the line and it still lines up after the shock and vibration test. So uh, it does make a big difference to have the torque elimination in there. 
uh, as far as shock and vibration. So here's, again, the top three, the, uh, the heavy line, meaning visible loosening of male and female nut, and then the heavy, uh, the, the dark color means no longer passes 10 to minus 9 leak check. So it really is, it's shock. Here's the, here's the shock phase, which is the fourth phase there. Shock and then vibration that causes these fittings to, uh, to start leaking and then to, to get worse as time continues. Here's where these fittings are now. The farthest ones out are out in the asteroid belt. They're part of the ion propulsion system on the Dawn mission. And like I mentioned earlier, these are on this MMRTG. This is the radioactive power source here. The fittings are used to take heat from that power source and warm the component package so that they can continue to do science on those chilly Martian nights. And this was just kind of a, <clears throat> a fun example I went through. I, I said, you know, in the standard uh, HF crystal growth experiment they were doing at Livermore Labs, they used to replace the fitting after 10 makes and breaks, which was every two weeks. And so I went through the cost of removing that fitting, putting a new one in every two weeks for the, for the four or five years that we was in there, and we figured out that the maintenance cost saved by having this fitting in there was $52,000. And, um, and then if you count the time of... Um, in semiconductor fabs, there's a downtime cost, an opportunity cost of having the equipment offline that actually was $19 million saved in those four years if you count the opportunity cost. So it is, it's worth having fittings that don't uh, degrade. And uh, so we're talking about tribology is the science of wear and tear of, uh, of friction and lubrication. So these are all metal fittings, the gaskets and the glands are all metal. And so um, it's kind of an interesting topic, but like we talked about earlier, galling and so forth, they're all topics that are important to discuss. And here's the total fitting cost if you talk about omnisafe versus metal fitting fittings. These are all the different ways that metal fittings can, can fail. They can fail by um, missed gaskets, over tightening, cross torque. Uh, cross torque is where you actually you tighten one fitting, it causes one next to it to rotate. So if you've ever worked with these systems, you know how frustrating that can be, trying to get everything tightened down. And um, so I'll wrap this up quickly here and just some references. So anybody have any questions on metal safe face steel fitting? Yes, sir. The fitting that you have up there is made of what kind of metal? Uh, Can, can you give me an idea of the price of that fitting, um, actually your design fitting, uh, in Hastelloy and something else? Yeah, so with 316L, uh, they're about 20 bucks a piece, um, and that's in production quantities. And uh, so if you go to exotics, it's going to be a little bit more money. You can't give a price unless you have a size, right? Yeah, you, you need to know how many. Well, I want one for like 16 inch diameter. <laughs> for 20 bucks. <laughs> All right, you got it. So yeah, if you do have, if you have examples, if you would like to. Double the price? Or did it make it 10% more, double it, or 10 times as much? Yeah, material cost, I think this is probably at least, it's probably going to be at least 10% more with the, with the uh, al, you know, exotic alloys. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, what is the limiting factor with the largest possible? Yeah, so these go So the guy just asked. What's the largest possible diameter for one of these fittings? Yeah, so the biggest we've had in uh, use right now with the uh, Global Observer, which is an aircraft, we have one inch version in that. We've uh, you know, surmised to go larger. I think that probably two inches is probably about the maximum size you can use. What do you know, why not? Well, um, it takes a tremendous amount of torque to tighten these things once you get to those sizes. What you're doing is you're embedding the toroid into the gasket. That's what's actually creating the seal. So. If you're embedding a huge toroid into a huge gasket, you need a lot of mechanical force to make that happen, so it ends up being a lot of torque. Yes? What limits do you foresee for increasing So Dave was asking what the temperature range is for the uh, different materials. Right. So the, the most temperature we've had, 800 C, is the highest we've had these so far. That's Inkaloy, um, Inkaloy, HT, it's, a, it's a, actually an alloy, and the HT stands for high temperature. So it's a high nickel alloy. Yeah. Uh, what's the gasket tool made out of? 
Uh, in our case, you can make the gasket with the, almost the same material. We do anneal it to make it slightly softer because we want that to be the thing that gives, not the toroidal surface that gives. But that toroidal shape actually is a very good uh, shape geometrically. As it crushes, the toroid actually squishes a little bit, and so it can uh, it work hardens itself as it tightens, and it crushes into that gasket. The gasket is disposable, meaning you throw it away each time. It's a consumable. And so each time you put a new gasket in, and, and uh, with the standard fitting without torque elimination, they used nickel because it, um, those fittings actually are destroyed because if the gasket is as hard as the material, they're galling each other dr dramatically. In our case, because there is no rotation, there's no galling, that there's not, not a problem. So we can actually use steel gaskets. All right. In an MSR, you'd use aluminum, though, right? Aluminum. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, thank you very much, Eric. I love. Uh, I love. To